Hello, my love. Welcome back and welcome to my living room. If you're meeting for the first time, my name is Jess and astrology, tarot, intuition, esoteric symbolism are a few of my many, many passions along with tea and gardening and homesteading and taking care of the home. Those are just things that is that I love. If we're meeting for the first time again, my name is Jess, welcome. Thank you so much for choosing to click on this video and for deciding to hang out with me. And for those of you guys that are old friends and family and you come back again and again, it is so good to be able to see you once again and to vibe with you once again. But also, I know many of you guys, I'm starting to recognize your names, your faces, your energy down in the comments, and I really appreciate that. There is a lot to talk about tonight that I actually had this video planned for tomorrow, but I couldn't wait, and I promise you it's not my green tea, although this green tea is a kick in the pants right now. Like It's only adding to my excitement and my energy that I wanna share with you guys about this, this moment. One of the reasons why I'm so excited about this is because I personally, and I'm just gonna talk candidly right now, not as an astrologer, but kind of as your best friend, I personally wait for times like this within the Zodiac um, timing with an astrological timing to initiate to start major life-changing projects as I say that I have like two things maybe three things that it is that are on the forefront of my mind that I'm gonna use this total eclipse this total solar eclipse to ignite them to start them and to get them in the works that's just me. I'm really big on working with new moons and full moons in order to set intentions and in order to work my magic. So that's how I'm doing it. You follow along with your energy and your intuition, but I will hopefully maybe convince you why this solar eclipse is going to be so powerful and so potent, and maybe we'll be working our magic at the same time. So you may see my puppies kind of migrating along, along in the back. I love them to have their freedom. So there might be a few distractions, uh, but in the meantime, if you're cool with that and if you're ready and you have your tea or if you're just cozied up and ready to go, uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. So like I said, we have the total eclipse that's happening in the sign of Aries. Aries is an, an important zodiac sign for every single one of us regarding, regardless of our sun, moon, or rising because this is the start of our zodiac season. It's the start of a new cycle within every single one of our lives. This is the time where fresh beginnings, newness, new birth, a new order starts to usher its way into our lives. And if I were you, or something that I would really encourage for you to do is to move with these energies and begin to initiate or watch as things are initiated when it comes to the areas of new beginnings and new chapters revealing themselves to you at this moment in time. You know when you sometimes kind of set intention and you know that there's something major and big that is going to be occurring in your life, like a huge revelation, you can feel it within your spirit, but it doesn't necessarily make itself publicly known or materialized in a way that's completely obvious to you. So you're just kind of like lingering there with like that awkward feeling or this impending doom or impending excitement. This is the time where all of those feelings begin to make sense because it takes an eclipse, a major eclipse, in order to begin to set that very thing into motion in a big, grand way. Now, I will say that historically speaking, in my own research, in my own experience, and but also in the experiences of others, because you guys know I'm constantly doing research, I will say that typically solar eclipses don't have this huge punch in the face like the full moon tends to, to have. It's more a big gaping wide hole that opens up within our lives that says, if you were gonna start something, now is the time. If you wait any longer, you're gonna miss the moment. You're gonna lose out on this momentum. Now, having said that, 
Aries is very, very active. It's masculine energy that is erupting and wanting to re um, not react, but act, take change, and initiate some major transformations within our lives. The truth is, is that if we are in Aries season, most of us, most of us have gone through incredible change inside of us already. We have probably has many major revelations as far as who we are, what we want. In certain bubbles, I like to call them bubbles, like little bubbles that we live in are popped if they're not a part of what the universe sees should be a part of our reality. <clears throat> For example, the universe will not allow you to live in a space that is disordered, chaotic, or is not truthful. The universe will always move in a way that is authentic and with integrity. So it will align all of those things to match and reflect its own intentions. So when we are in airy season, we have already kind of sifted through all of the muck, all of the seed, all of the sediment of everything that was collected. And we now are ushering into a new beginning, a new chapter where we say, you know what? I've lived, I've learned, I'm moving on, and this is who I am now. Emphasis on the word I am. This is who I am now because that's the energy that Aries rules. There's this level of courage and confidence that Aries energy infuses into every single one of us that says you get to define who you are. You get to reveal to the world what, how you tick and what you want and what you're about. And you get to tell yourself or begin to become the embodiment of where your growth has led you. This means that you don't talk about it, you be about it. This means that you're not talking about it, your actions are reflecting that. So at the time of the solar eclipse in Aries, which if I didn't say it already, it's April 19th for the majority of us. I personally have the chart pulled up at 2.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but it's gonna happen a little later after that. For some of you guys, it's gonna be April 20th of 2023. But if I were you, I would pull, pull the chart, pull your own natal chart and see where this is falling um, and exactly how it's falling within your chart because that's going to give you even more clarity into what door this is opening within your own life. But even past the astrological suggestions, what are you intuitively sensing? What are you intuitively sensing? Now, I want to talk to you about that intuitive sense and that intuitive longing because that is contributing to this kick in the pants that says, yo, tick tock, it's time to go. So Aries is naturally ruled by the planet Mars. And Mars, again, is this great boost in the pants that says, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's time. This is what I'm chasing. This is what I'm pursuing. Masculine energy, you can't stop me now. Now, although Mars is falling in the sign of Cancer, which he, because it's masculine, does not feel like he is thriving in the sign of Cancer. Cancer itself, even though it's very empathetic and soft and nurturing, it's also a cardinal sign. And for those of you guys that don't know, cardinal signs are the great activators within the zodiac. I'm gonna call them the activators. They're the ones who initiate change even when they're not trying. So there's so much energy within this chart already just by those two major aspects. We have the sun, which represents our ego, the moon, which rep represents, represents our emotion, falling in this fiery, igniting sign of Aries. And then we have Mars, ruling Aries, falling in the sign of Cancer, the cardinal sign. There's so much energy here that says, it's time to go, we need to make change. So as I'm talking about this, I really want you to try to be very open to downloading and receiving a little bit intuitive guidance and inspiration as far as what this might look like for you. Now again, I am huge on astrology. I am huge on astrology. But again, if I was your best friend we're sitting at the table and I were just drinking our coffee and we're vibing, eating cream puffs, I'm obsessed with cream puffs right now and also granola, <laughs> random, but that's the truth. If we're just sitting there enjoying our snacks, I would say to you as your best friend, listen, Let's not even incorporate the astrology chart right now. What is your intuition and what is your vibe telling you? What does your heart really, really want? What does your heart really, really want? What does your life now look like at this stage, at this cycle in your journey? Now, I do want to say, now, now I'm pulling up from the table, not as your best friend, but now as your astrologer. I'm noticing that every time when we talk about setting intentions, 
and they always have to be these big elaborate plans and I just want to say that it doesn't always have to be so big and radical because the truth is is that the majority of us have really gone through some major highs some lows and we're hanging on and we've built those muscles and we've strengthened our faith muscles but for the most part it can create a level of exhaustion it is very possible that this could be the solar eclipse that ignites change within you to activate a healthy physical fitness plan because again, all these planets right now that I've just mentioned are very physically active. They wanna get moving. So this could be a great opportunity, not for you to instigate major more change in your life, but even small nuances of things that you can see yourself implementing and taking them more seriously. And I promise you, they're going to be more likely to stick. Having said that, I can't ignore the fact that many of you guys are going to be in this roaming independent type of spirit energy. I wouldn't be surprised if you are feeling very empowered to start a new chapter within your businesses. Maybe you might be exploring self-employment. Some of you guys are selling homes or moving out of your homes and moving into vans and trying a more simple life, focusing more on the quality of the time that is that you're spent here on the earth and you just refuse to be a slave to the system. This is something that is that I'm seeing within the chart and this is a, a larger scale, right? We have Pluto exiting out of the sign of Capricorn which says you know what the system was broken anyways why am I so obligated to show up in this way when it feels unhealthy it doesn't feel good it feels toxic we've learned after the transit of Saturn transiting through the sign of Aquarius which has broken down social medias and our normals like experiences things that it is that we're like why do we live like this now that Saturn is transiting through the sign of Pisces it says you know what I'm gonna take more serious the vibes how does this make me feel if the vibe isn't healthy or conducive to me how could it contribute to my overall health and my own longevity and how could that be good for our society as a whole so these are very serious questions that is that we're asking and thank god for neptune transiting through the sign of pisces which is divine intervention stepping forward and saying you know whispering in her ears why don't you consider this plan why don't you deviate from your normal path not only are we the bringers of major change for our generation, but we're breaking the generational cycles and curses of those who came before us. And that is another thing that as I'm seeing with this sign, this or with this uh, total uh, solar eclipse, this shines a light on some baggages that need to be completely let go of and we need to start fresh and start new in a way that is healthy and proactive and bright and stunning and vibrant and brings vitality. Having said that, again, this isn't a full moon and usually with full moons there's certain revelations and things that get slapped into your face where you're like look at it you gotta look at it it's not going to do that for you i truly feel that with the total the total solar eclipse that this is going to give you the power in your hands in order to steer the boat in the way that leads the others in the direction that's for the betterment of you and all of us as a whole so that's why again now as your best friend i want to sit down at the table and be like yo what has your heart been saying to you lately? What do you see yourself wanting to, ag not aggressively go after, but what do you see yourself needing to begin to pursue right now? And this doesn't have to be something huge or major. It could be a small thing that once you get it started, it will stick. And I will say that whatever seems to be bubbling here or brewing within you, it, it does seem to stick. There's a lot of transits here. For example, um, Mercury transiting through the sign of Taurus, even though he will go retrograde a little later on, um, he's still stable enough at the time of the, the eclipse that it will create abundance and blessing, especially when it comes to your own creation. The reason why is because Mercury is in a square with the part of fortune, part of fortune sitting in the sign of Leo. Leo is all about self-expression, being bold and expressive about who you are and in your light and sharing your light and your authentic voice. I love Leo energy. The part of fortune brings our luck there. And with that, it brings us a lot of joy. And Mercury 
takes that and Mercury conjunct Uranus because that's going to be happening again at the time of the uh, solar eclipse. It brings in a, a huge burst of income or stability or a blessing of some sort that you will be able to put your hands on. So if this is not something that you see, I want to say that the best way to use this is not to wait for it, but to go after it. I can't tell you how many times people pray, set intention, try to manifest things, but then they sit on their sofa and they never answer the door, they never get out, and opportunity misses them time and time and time and time again. Don't let that be you. So, how are you going to work with the activation of this Aries solar, Aries, Aries solar eclipse? Actually, now I think about it, Aries is a phenomenal name. I never even thought of Aries as a name, but it just has a certain level and power. That's a side note. I, as I was saying, and I was just like, ooh, Aries, Aries. I love that name. Um, but yeah, how are you going to be using this Aries to total solar eclipse? I, I, I do want to say, too, before we kind of sign out, um, that this could start... I'm hoping, I don't want to say this out loud because I'm really big on intention and I have a way of what I say tends to manifest. If we see major changes globally when it comes to war or when it comes to money, when it comes to health, anything that pops off during the, the total eclipse, the, day, the days around it, we're really going to need to watch it with a close eye. We, you have me, we have each other. So, of course, I'm going to continue to show up and share my own predictions. But I will say that eclipses like this, we can use it for good and to initiate change within our own lives. But if we are a bystander standard of something that is happening around us, fingers crossed that it feels good. But with the way that the charts are positioned it could create some chaos and it could create some global pain. And I don't say that to provoke anxiety within you because I've always said, if you see me running, then you run. And I'm not running, I have a sense of peace in my, in my present and I am holding on to that. <laughs> I can't tell you how many friends are like, oh my God, Jess, what do I do? Do I pull out all my money out of the bank? And I'm just like, you, you can calm down. What do I do with cryptocurrency? All these guys are dying. That has something to do with astrology, but it's more about, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. So I, I understand the panic. I totally understand the panic, but we're not there yet. There's times like this where as an astrologer and as an intuitive, the best thing I could do and what, the only thing I should be doing is falling back and waiting to see how things move. And then from that place, I will move accordingly. At this time, again, there's a lot of unpredictable energy that's going on within the chart, so I wouldn't be surprised if something did pop off. Again, it's not as bad as a full moon, but a new moon, ultimately, in this circumstance, in this conversation, it could be worse, um, which I know that that's kind of like a catch-22, because if I said it, it's not that bad, but... I mean, like, it gives us time to prepare, you know what I mean? And it gives us time to kind of see, like, how things are unfolding instead of being slapped in the face immediately. That's what I mean by bad versus worse. So it could create the door, it could open up the door for problems globally, but we'll have to wait and see. And this would have to do with politics, the government, banks, and also, of course, the conversation of war. So if that is something that drops on the radar on the news, we're definitely gonna need to take that a little bit more seriously. But for right now, please don't panic, stay with me um, and focus on yourself and focus on your health and focus on your happiness. And if any point you need to de-plug or you know, wipe the slate clean in a way that is fresh and a new spring start for you, then by all means do it. You have my full support. All right, my loves, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. I hope that this answered some of your questions and if it didn't then feel free to leave comments down below in all of the comment section I just I've really been working a lot on my balance lately so I can actually respond and read those comments and I've been doing a phenomenal job with that chef's kiss I will have absolutely there's no way I'm missing I will have an Aries lunar um, solar eclipse oil. I, I normally say lunar oils because they work with the energy of the moon, but if I say lunar oils, it's going to get confusing for some people. But I will have an Aries intention oil for this, and it will be 
predominantly focusing on the energy of protection, um, self-mastery is something that's coming through, but also the activation of the blessing of this new beginning, this new journey, this new chapter within your life. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, I do work my magic regularly. You can find me at bahadilife.com. And if you don't know how to work with intention oils, or if you don't know how they how they work, or how you know how to use them in your everyday, I do have a video for you on for that on my website. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Thank you so much again for hanging out with me, and hopefully I'll see you soon. If not, it was a pleasure. It was an honor to be able to connect with you now, and I hope maybe one day that our paths cross. Until then, you guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye.